This morning, I'm thinking about three things. I'm thinking about love, legacy, and living into our vision as a spiritual community, as this invitation to join our movement is happening. Uh, I'm asking you to listen from a very particular place. Where are you in this story? How are you connected to this ministry? And where do you see yourself? I'm not a random person speaking, but I am you. I came to Middle about 13 years ago to co-lead the gospel choir and to work with children and youth. I remember one of my first solo participations in worship was around this time for Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, I was sitting in the back listening to worship. Jackie had asked me to sing in Spanish and I had my song all ready to go. Uh, there was a guest who was right before me, a woman who had written a book about uh, folks crossing over the border from Mexico into the U.S. She read a passage from her book, and you know I was listening or half listening, but her words seemed to enter into me without me even knowing it. She talked about the people taking this journey and the sacrifice it was to cross over for a better life, that there were people, families in the back of a moving truck, silent, fearing for their lives, but hopeful for a chance at new life. But they never got the opportunity, however, because they were left in a parking lot in the hot summer sun. And they were found days later. Everyone had perished. So I heard these words, and I was overcome with sadness and despair <laughs> right in the moment that I needed to go and sing. And I just had to sit there to compose myself because God had spoken. And not necessarily in the sermon or in the song or in the scripture, but through this passage. And I could feel God's sorrow. And it opened me up to something different about worship that only happened here at Middle. And that is that God is in everything. That you don't have to necessarily be in the scripture or hear a song that mentions God or look at a, a piece of art that has an angel in it. But God is everywhere and that's who Middle is. Middle is right here, bringing artists to the forefront so that they can show you who God is for them. And when you see who God is for them, you see God for yourself. And sometimes you don't even realize it. You're just sitting there and you're half listening. But God is no respecter of persons and God enters where God enters and God moves as God moves and God touches as God touches and God transforms as God transforms and it just happens right here without you even knowing it. A tear may come down or you may laugh or you may sing out a, a verse that you didn't know was possible. Love is possible here at Middle. Legacy. A few years after the establishment of New Amsterdam at the tip of Manhattan Island, the church is formally organized with the jo uh, Reverend Jonas Michaelius as minister. The congregation meets in a large room over the mill which grinds the colonist grain. This was in 1628. In 1628, the vision for this collegiate system was created. And so what I want to tell you about in the Join the Movement is legacy. Because it's not just about what you're putting in the offering plate right now to sustain us so that we get to our goal in June. But it's legacy. What am I doing to create this for the people who have not even come into these doors? What are we doing as a congregation to, to build beyond what we may even not be here to see? We're so focused on that date at the end of the year, and we should be. But what about the legacy? What are we leaving to the people who are coming after we're no longer here? Jerice Johnson, who started the Gospel Choir, the Celebrate Life Meal that is now Momentum, Butterfly with Danita Branham, the, the Lower East Side Girls Club that, that Lynn Pentecost created out of the basement of the church. Where are we in that story, Middle, is what I'm asking you. 
The join the movement, is, it's, it's about love and it's about legacy. It's about giving to other people what you got. It's about giving more than you received. It's so Holy Spirit what Christina said and what I have because I didn't know what she was going to preach on. So the third thing I want to tell you is about vision, because vision is so important. We have our own vision statement in the bulletin that we read from time to time, but it instructs and it helps us plan for everything that we do and everything that we see. And so again, my question to you, Middle, is can you see yourself in the middle of it? How do you fit into the legacy? Where will you put your time, energy, and talents and treasure? Will you be like Olga Downing? Do you know who Olga was? Do you know she was a member of this church? And she left the church a million dollars. People, she, she just wore regular everyday clothes. Nobody knew what was going on until that day that Gordon went into her house. And she had left something for middle. And she didn't make a big announcement. She didn't have a big trumpet fanfare but it's just what was in her heart to do. Where do you see yourself in this story? I'm calling you to join the movement of love, legacy, and vision that you might declare yourself as someone who is ready to be a part of this vision. Middle, we are ready to hold you in this community. We are ready for this community to be your community. So if you're interested in that love legacy vision, we invite you after worship here at the front to speak to one of the ministers so they can sign you up for the Gospel Jubilee, as we used to say in the church, to be a part of this and this and this and this. Amen, middle.